what the heck is a trepanning tool and why do we even care? Welcome back to Ox Tools, I'm Tom. So today we're going to take a look at a hand ground trepanning tool and uh, this is an example right here. We're going to learn how to grind it and we're going to learn how to use it in the lathe and why it's uh, a really handy tool to know about. Let's check it out. Okay, so here's the job and um, what we're trying to do here is um, uh, my friend Paul Compton in over in the UK, he's got some relatively expensive material and what he has to do is he has to produce um, some rings from it, uh, some ring shaped parts, but he also has to uh, preserve the core uh, so that he can make another part out of. Uh, and there's a way to do that and it works out pretty good and that's a trepanning tool. And um, so instead of buying you know, twice as much material as you need, you can get everything you need out of a, out of a single chunk, okay? Um, and this is a trepanning tool, and the idea is we can come in along the side of the material here like so and cut a face groove in it or trepan a, an annular uh, ring out here, and then we can separate the ring and still preserve this uh, this core material to make the uh, the other part. So what he's doing is, I guess it's um, um, he's making valve seats and valve guides out of a particular bronze uh, alloy that he's using. Anyway, so we're gonna check out how to grind one of these tools here and uh, actually uh, try it out and uh, see how it works. All right, so here's here's the one I showed. Um, what we got to do is, uh, what I like to do, just to kind of get me going in the right direction, is I just kind of sketch on the, uh, on the tool blank what I want to do here. And uh, so this will be straight here. And then we'll come back like that. And then this will be relieved out. Okay. Um, and then this depth here is equal to um, your the width of the ring that you want to get out, right? So, you know, you can actually go pretty far and the ratio here, I guess, uh, kind of guidance on the, on the ratio is maybe six or eight times the, the width here. So if you take this width, let's say it's, um, you know, an eighth of an inch or something like that, you can, you know, you could probably go up to maybe an inch and you know that's pushing it that's eight times the width so six or eight times that's uh, probably a practical limit um, a reasonably <laughs> conservative practical limit for a, a hand ground tool so uh, now this actually takes a while to, to carve off all that material on the on a bench grinder so what we're going to use is we're going to use a cutting disc and we're going to come in here and just nip out these, uh, nip out this big block here, and then slice that off, and that'll give us a good head start on uh, uh, on our tool. Okay, so let's go do that. So that saves a bucket load of work there. All right, so the cutting disc really has the potential to uh, save you a bunch of time on the, on the bench grinder. Now this is a M2 Cobalt, so you know, it grinds, it takes a little while to grind it. So uh, anyway, that's an easy technique for, uh, for getting some out of your way. So let's do a little, uh, little grinding here.
Okay, so we're sneaking up on it here. We're looking pretty good. Um, now we got to start really concentrating on the, uh, the relief angles here, in particular on the inside edge. So if we look at the, uh, what we have to do here, okay, the outside edge, as you can see there, um, actually, you know what, let's just look at the ring here. That's probably the easiest. Um, this, this inside edge, or outside edge, I should say, um, has to have significant relief to clear that curvature, to clear this curvature here. So um, we're really gonna focus on, uh, on this inside edge. The outside edge kind of takes care of itself because um, when, you're on a, when you're on an edge like this, the material's curving away from it, so it kind of gives you kind of automatic relief. So uh, you don't have to, uh, to focus so much on that. God, I get the shakes there, huh? Not enough coffee or too much coffee. Um, anyway, so this uh, inside edge here is really, uh, really the one that we have to focus on. When the tool's on center, this lower edge, it has to curve away and clear the material un oops, underneath. And uh, you can kind of see it on this one, this one that's already, come on, man. Dropping stuff all over the place. Okay, so we just have to clear that, that material there. Maybe we can see it better like this. Oh yeah, this is a better way to show it, okay. So we're coming in this way like this, and you can see on the inside, uh, you know, we have to have clearance there, okay? Yeah, that's, a, come on, Mr. Bozo, that's a better way to show that. So here's our new tool, and it actually doesn't look too bad. <laughs> it actually doesn't look too bad for this, uh, for this particular radius, so, huh. well, sometimes, Hey, you know what? Sometimes a, uh, a blind monkey finds a nut once in a while, so, or a blind squirrel finds a nut. Okay, so we refined it more now. Let's take a look at it here. So this is the direction of cut this way here, and you can see, you see that inner edge. We're looking at the inner edge here. If we put it on center, we need clearance for that curvature. And that's really the whole secret to a trepanning tool is getting the clearances correct. They, they work wonderfully, but sometimes understanding um, the clearances can be a little bit tricky. And as this radius changes, as we get in closer to the center, it curves more sharply, right? So the relief has to change. So as long as we're, you know, this tool will work for this size and larger um, and maybe a tiny bit smaller, okay? But uh, uh, so if we needed to cut in this area of the solid, uh, the relief would be significantly different. So that's kind of the challenge uh, in these tools is understanding the relief. So actually this looks pretty good here. I'm reasonably happy with that. Now to change the width of the tool, once I get the inner relief the way I want, I would focus on this outer edge to, to change the width of this and to get it, uh, if I had a specific width that I was looking for. I'm, not looking for a specific width here. I don't know what Paul's doing, so uh, uh, we'll probably just use this tool as is. So I'm gonna go grind a little chip breaker in it to help us out, and then uh, we'll, we'll give it a go. Now something else to note here too is, uh, hopefully you can see this, is the, the tool is tapering from the, from the front to the back. So this is uh, the top relief, I call it, uh, maybe side relief, I don't know. The, the terminology is a little confusing, but the width of the tool, it's widest in front and then behind that edge, it tapers back. So we have kind of a, a dovetail shape there, so to speak, okay? So it's narrower here than it is there because we're cutting in this, in this direction. All right, so let's go grind a chip breaker on that and then uh, we'll set it up in the lathe and uh, cross our fingers. actually pretty good there. You know what? I'm not going to get greedy. I'm just going to, you know what? I like the looks of that. You know, I'm tempted because I was lucky uh, and got a nice uh, alignment right out of the gate. I'm tempted to put a little more on there, but you know what? It's going to work fine. Okay, so we got the tool in the holder here. Now we just got to get it set up correctly here. I got it loose so I can wiggle it around. And what I want to do is just kind of run it up 
and and look at it and look at the clearance and what I'm doing is I'm just feeding it in hard to see here and I'm looking at the uh, at the clearance to make sure I still have clearance and that looks pretty good right there Maybe a little more okay and then I'll lock it down um, and check the center height then we'll give it a go and see if it uh, it behaves itself okay all right so we're going to just sidle up along the side of that little little guy there actually and then uh, just plunge into that face and uh, see what happens all right let's give this thing a go so i'm going to come up and i'm going to just touch on the uh that center portion there pretty good there and I'm just gonna zero the DRO just so I have a reference point then I'm gonna just do a little uh, test plunge in the face there see how she behaves and so far so good I'm just looking at the tool, the sides of the tool, make sure nothing's dragging on the sides of the tool. All right, let's, uh, let's get some uh, liquid love going here. It's always, uh, trepanning is one of those ones, uh, you really want to just keep everything kind of wet. I think I got to take a little more off the tool. Yeah, I got a little spot right here that looks like it's going to touch. Okay, so I need to relieve the tool a little bit more. All right, let's try that again. I, uh, I put a little more relief on the side there. So let's see what, uh, what we can do here. Get back into position. Okay. Get our, our juice going. Make sure block. Okay, looking pretty good. All right, let's go to town here. Okay, so there's a, a trepanning tool for making rings and uh, leaving a stump in the middle. So anyway, try it out, uh, grind a tool for yourself and see how you like it.
Um, this one of the beauties of high speed steel is that uh, you can make anything that you want. Um, it's, Im it's important to understand how to grind your own tools because uh, you can't always get what you need uh, in an inserted tool um, in the kind of time frame that you might need it. So this is something you can do in, in I don't know, a half an hour or 45 minutes uh, once you kind of get used to it and you're off and running and it works fine. You can use this on pretty much any material here. So anyway, hope you liked the video and uh, throw some uh, comments in the comment section and uh, let me know what you thought of it. Thanks for watching, guys.